Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got Trev pretty chilled out under me here. So let's hope he's uh, got a bird's eye view, not from the best angle, let's be certain. <laughs> so um, as you can see, I'm in the studio, one of the studios here at Chesterfield. So again, thank you very much for the good kind folk there for allowing me to come in and do some of the videoing. So thank you very much for the guys at Chesterfield. So if your game has plateaued and you want to try and take your game to the next level, not my most favorite, um, comment anyway because it can kind of be a little bit detrimental but this exercise and this drill which I have touched on before in previous videos actually is going to be a great one for you now I would say not every video is for everybody as we know um, I'm here to give you a general overview of the golf swing so I would say this is kind of a little bit more elite but everyone can actually do this because getting yourself in the correct positions and being able to have consistency is the key to more improved golf and more enjoyable golf, right? So I'm just gonna get the back camera set up and let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight into it actually. So saves waffling. Um, oh, next time you go to the range, I want you to see if you can hit the ball from this halfway down position. So being halfway down, probably a bit more than that actually. So you can see I'm kind of way past left arm parallel because I've got my elbow into my side, my hands have kind of not come straight down because I don't want you to pull down at all. My hands are kind of going straight out. As you can see from the top of the backswing, they kind of go out to the ball there roughly. But more importantly, I've got the club kind of down my right forearm if I bring it back a little bit more, as you can see. So I've got the club way back behind me. Now, this isn't the distance exercise right now, but I want you to see if you can hit the ball from here. Now, I don't want you to start from here. I want you to give yourself a little bit of momentum pump, but I don't want you to swing way back up to the top. It's only kind of six inches maximum. If you can hit the ball from here, you've got the X factor to your golf swing. Club behind you, tiny little pump, and make a full follow through. Don't worry about what the follow through looks like right now, because I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail a little bit further along in the video, because there are two different ways to hit the ball from there, depending on your fault. So bear with me on that one. Elbow in, touching my increasingly large belly. Club back behind me. Okay, little pump from here. You can see, this is the video I did way back, I think, outside. This is gonna make you an elite golfer. I'm gonna show you what's going on a little bit and how to break this all down. So, halfway down, haven't moved yet too much. Club out, so the more shallow you get it, the more the club's behind you, the harder it is now to get this club back to the ball. If you've got a mirror behind you, or a window with your reflection, is you want the club kind of closer to your right arm, than especially this one. So you want the club closer to your right arm. You don't really want it too steep, as you can see there. So from here, tiny little pump. Remember, it's not distance, I'd say this is probably going 70 yards. I've got an eight iron. Do, it with a, do something with a bit of loft. Okay, so let's break this down. What's going on? If you can't hit it from there, and I would say 50% of people I've given this drill to, because you're on plane and quite shallow, 50% of people shank it from there. That tells you that if you're, especially if you're used to coming over the top and quite steep, you're gonna have to then make a compensation to get that club back to the ball. So being able to hit the ball from this shallow position is a great guideline to see how well you're releasing it. So let me talk you through what's going on in terms of how to get this club back to the ball. So let's get in that same position. The further back behind you, the harder it is, but you can see I've got a nice 90 degree angle. Now from here, pull this club back to the ball. So you can see what's happening because my left hand and the butt of this club isn't going out away from me, it's going back into me now. So you can see the butt of this club from here is going now towards my left shoe. So it's kind of pulling this club back to the ball. So you can see from the behind view, it's obviously a little bit static and not correct really, but I'm really tight. You can see, remember the elite player's swing, especially the professional, is you've got too much of this gap. Remember you slices need that little gap. So remember, hold fire. Remember there's two ways to release this. And you can see there's no deviation there. And from here, there's not a lot of body motion. Obviously, there's a bit of lateral, you can see from the front view. There's a bit of kicking off. But my main is like, pull back into me. There's my connection. 
I've got both my kind of triceps into my body. I've got full connection so I can keep hold of it with a body release. Remember, that's not for you slicers. Body release is for someone who's overhandsy. A bit more of an elite player, hooker, pusher of the ball. Tiny, tiny, 20 yard shot here. Start small, everyone. If you can hit it, remember the X factor. The X factor is if you can hit it from this shallow backswing position, right arm in, still bent, club back behind me, very shallow, tiny, tiny pumps. If you can hit it from there, which means if you can hit it out of the middle of the face, you've got the X factor. Now the secret now is to speed that up. Beautiful. So I'm really feeling those clubs back behind me. I'm waiting for it. My hands haven't come straight down here. That's not real life. I don't want any pull down at all. My hands in the transition are going out. So you can see with the line, they're going out towards the ball a little bit more. Club sits back behind me, nice and light. Now I'm working on this club getting pulled into me. By the butt of the club, my hands getting pulled left. They're not getting away from me here at all. I've probably done a million of these. God, I remember standing at the range 10 years ago. Just drilling this. Earphones in, I remember listening to Pink Floyd. No dodgy comments, please. So I used to do it for one album's worth. Stick Pink Floyd on. And I used to just do this every single day to allow consistency and this kind of release pattern to bleed into my golf swing. So when I stood on that first tee, it was obviously never perfect straight away but it bled into my swings. So I actually don't think about this while I hit it. Trev, you need to stay there, bud. Move this on a little bit now, so. Tiny, pull back. That's all I'm doing. I'm not moving my chest yet, really. I'm allowing this release, this club just to get pulled back into the ball from here. Look how tight that is. Follow through, I'm keeping it nice and passive. Bit more of a body release for me. If you're suffering from a shank, if you're, say if you're, if you hit the ball, if you're not an over the topper, we'll just say, and you're shanking it, this is the drill for you because what you're doing from here is you're pulling the toe across the ball, keeping it really consistent. You're not getting thrown out here. So just a little spice to this is just to kind of from here, you're pulling the hands back into your kind of your left side, your left pocket, allowing the club to come out, but you're allowing the kind of your weight is to kind of sit onto your left heel. So you can see there, the next drill for the exercise, if you're not sure where the follow through goes, is to stop halfway through. Halfway through meaning club parallel to the ground, hands parallel to the ground. You can see I'm fully released now, club back into my belly. That's the X factor, everyone. Remember, if you can hit it from this shallow position, the shallower, the better. Hogan said, the flatter his swing, the fatter his wallet. What a beautiful statement. The flatter his swing, the fatter his wallet. Now we can't all be Hogan's, but we can introduce a little bit of this flatness, get it back into impact, swing all the way through if you want. Now the next move is to not, obviously not stop halfway down. That can be a bit unnerving because obviously now you've kind of lost that feeling because obviously we're gonna carry on and swing through that position. So let's take a bit of pace off. So it's nice and easy, swing down, through, hit that right out the toe, don't mind though. So remember, doing this into a net is absolutely beautiful. Remember, you're not half the results. I would say, yes, 90% of the time you wanna bang a swing thought in and off you go, beautiful. But this is here to kind of build this foundation to your golf swing. Love that sort of thing. If you can drill it and drill it and drill it all day long. Don't even need a golf ball really. You can just do this at home in the garden. Hold, feel that the club's way back behind me as you can see from the behind view. Pull the club back into impact. Pull your hands back in close to you and then let it go. Oh no, we're swinging all the way through, aren't we, without stopping. Sorry, I'm getting a bit carried away. Okay, nice backswing, nice and light. Okay, you're gonna feel like we're swinging through here. Probably won't. 
a bit harder that time. It's always more difficult when you're layering speed into it, but we're building up. Always say it, don't I? Let's build the speed up into your swing. Then you can layer mechanics. See, so I really stop there. Remember, just being able to kind of go in between these two feelings here. It doesn't really matter about where you stop. I'll show you in a little while about different releases, but really you're trying to swing through this position. So I'd say initially they can do stop, one hold. Look how small that pump was. Remember, the biggest thing I see people trying to do this is they try and hit it too hard. Don't do that. Hold, you can see from behind you, comes way back behind me. I'm delaying it. Tiny pump, you can see there's a tiny pump, not even six inches. Beautiful. It's so easy to do this wrong, and you do a big pump and you're trying to hit it too far, and over you go. So it's really important to kind of keep it in there. Tiny, remember I've still got my elbow into my side here. Now all I'm focusing on is getting this club back into impact getting this, getting my hands moving left towards my left knee, bringing the semicircle back into my left shoe there, pulling that club across the ball. But I'm pulling that club across the ball from an inside path. That's the key. So I can still draw it from here. As much as you can see from the behind view, my club's getting, my hands are getting pulled left, but my club is still coming from the inside. That's how you hit a consistent draw, by the way. Now, if you're a slice of the ball, you can still do this, by the way. You can do the same swing, stop halfway down, and you're doing less body, and you're just now releasing your hands and arms. You can give a bit of foot release as well. So everything stays the same in terms of leg release, but you're just keeping it a little bit more passive with your top half. Me, I'll, I'll pull it a little bit more across me whilst my body's turning, as you can see. You slice of the ball, and pull this club back in, but you're just keeping everything a little bit more static. So you can see the difference between the two there. I'll play a little kind of slow motion between the two there with some kind of notes. Body release is gonna be less release with my hands and arms. So you kind of need to know where you are, by the way, before you do this, you need to know if you need to introduce more arm release to your swing or a bit more body release. And then someone who's kind of a bit more of a slicer got too much body in their swing, is you're keeping it back, keeping it back. Remember, tiny little pump, keep nice and static, and just release your club. So what I would say slow motion of that is, let's get a ball down there. What you really want to do from here, you want to, the club wants to, your hands want to still be pulling slightly left, but you want to be keeping it nice and static and let the club swing past you. You can see the difference there. Really static, too much. You'll probably hit a little draw from there but you're keeping very static and allowing, because this club's swinging from the inside now, you're allowing this club to swing past you without the body release. That's for you slicers. For you elite golfers, you can just body turn it all the way through. Remember the X factor. If you can hit the ball from this shallow position doing this drill, the shallower, the harder. Shallower meaning the more the club shaft, as you can see from behind you, is pointing so far out, it's ridiculous. Really in a perfect world, you kind of want it here. But whilst, when you create speed on the club, it will want to get pulled out, especially if you've got that fault. So keep it back behind you. Remember, the most important thing with this exercise is a tiny pump, not a big one, because you can get in trouble there. So a tiny little pump and pull it across you. Any questions, I'd love to hear from you because as much as that looks easy, it really isn't. Because if you're not used to hitting the ball from that shallower position, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So please give it a go next time you go to the range or you go into a net. Can you hit it from that shallow position halfway down? Remember the trap door to fall into. Don't try and hit it too hard. It's not a distance exercise. All you're really doing is can you hit it quite close to the sweet spot. That's all you're doing. You're not looking for a perfect ball flight. This is all about getting this club from a shallow position into impact and see if you can get it back into impact with some consistency. Because if you can hit it from this shallow position, you will create the consistency, I guarantee it. The more you can get the club from this X factor, which I call it position, 
this kind of pillar to your golf swing. If you can get it, if you can swing through here, you're in a great chance to create that consistency you're after. Not just consistency of, of straightness, of spin control, but of strike, of everything. Just blending that little pot together. And that recipe, hopefully this is a massive ingredient to it. Next time you go to the range, I'd love to hear if you can do it or not. So give me a comment below. Love to hear from you. You can comment um, either below or you can go follow me on the social media sites, the Academy social media sites and give me a message there and I'll do my best at the moment to get back to you as soon as I can. So once again, thank you very much for choosing the channel to be part of your kind of hopefully your coaching help, really. The channel is here and I'm here for you to learn and understand your golf swing and a golf swing. Because like I've said before, golf swings evolve. We're not the same golfer as we were hopefully about a year ago. So we're here to kind of hopefully find something that works and stick with it. So I really appreciate everyone's support and you know, I appreciate that there's a lot of choice for you out there. So you know, I really appreciate you taking the time out and supporting the channel. And if you'd like to see more videos like this or if there's anything that you see of interest, I'd love you to have you along for a subscriber. And if you're a regular viewer to the channel, thank you very much for all your continued support. It means so much to me. So for myself and a very sleepy Trevor, actually he's got a head cover in his mouth at the moment, and we bid you a good golfing week. And please stay healthy on and off the golf course. And until next time, we'll see you then. Cheerio.